Hi, and welcome to our tutorial on how to alienate acquaintances on the web, which is based on our paper, Interventions for Softening Can Lead to a Hardening of Opinions, Evidence from a Randomized Control Trial. This is an interdisciplinary paper with Bob West from the EPFL Data Science Lab and Ahmad Abu Akel from the Department of Psychology at the University of Lausanne. Now, the title of the paper is quite a mouthful, so let's jump in with something that we're familiar with, which is social media. So this is a very typical situation that you've likely seen before. Someone, in this case Greta Thunberg, wants to talk about an issue that is of importance to her, and she gets immediately shut down and is told to shut up by some other user. So there's clearly some problems that we're having as a society with polarization online. So the question is, can we maybe do something about this? So in this case, we see that clearly John does not like Greta and disagrees with her idea and as a result shuts down the conversation immediately. And the question is, why is he doing this? Or more importantly, is there maybe something that we can do about this? And here the intuition is that maybe this is because he just doesn't like Greta. And maybe there is someone who he likes, so in this case maybe Adele, who he would be more inclined to talk about. So the question is, can Adele reach him better than anyone else could? And this is the core hypothesis that we have. If we have a spokesperson who is liked by someone, then they're more likely to be able to engage with them and maybe depolarize a very radical and polarized opinion. Similarly, we could consider an expert. Here the idea is that if someone is an expert on a topic and you are not, and they disagree with you, then maybe you should reconsider your opinion. Finally, we could consider a bit of reverse psychology and consider the case where someone who you dislike agrees with you. So maybe that should also give you some prompt to consider, hmm, maybe I'm wrong if I'm really sure about disliking this person. And these are the four hypotheses that we want to test in the following. So let's move on to the experiment designed for this, for our study to do this. The first part of what we need here are short, concise arguments about topics with polar viewpoints. So we can get those from quotations on the news where we have constructed a large corpus of attributed news quotations, and we can search and filter those for quotations that fit and then manually select some that we can use for the survey. The second part that we need are spokespersons. So here we want to use celebrities because those have been shown to work in marketing because there is a pseudo personal bond that develops between anyone and a celebrity just because of being subjected to them on the web and in the movies and so on. However, we also require an expert. So here we're not using a real person because there is no universal expert that we could use for all the topics and still have consistency. So we made up a fictitious expert that we're going to use in the following. And these are the two components that we need. So what we can do is we now start with the screening survey to establish the prior opinions of the participants. So what we want are their attitudes towards celebrities and their opinions on topics. For the first one, we just take a list of celebrities. We show this to the participants and we have them decide if they like or dislike the celebrity and we store this information. For the topics, we went with four topics, climate change, vaccination, immigration, and abortion. And then we asked them on which side of the polar spectrum they are on, just so we have their prior opinion. Then moving on from this, we want to assign spokespersons and topics to the participants in the four conditions. So the four conditions match the hypotheses that we have. So a disagreeing, uh, liked spokesperson, a disliked spokesperson who disagrees, an expert who disagrees, and a disliked spokesperson who agrees. So this is the template that we need to fill in with the information that we have. So on the one hand, we can use the um, quotations that we have at the polar ends of the spectrum and the respondents uh, answers to the screening survey. So we know which celebrities they like and what their opinions are. 
And then we really use this to fill in the template. So for the first one, we need a liked spokesperson. So we just pick one at random. In this case, we can use Tom Hanks. And we need a disagreeing quotation. So we know from the screening that the participant is on the positive end of the spectrum for climate change. So we would use the, neg the quotation on the negative end. And similarly, we can now you look for a disliked spokesperson and a disagreeing quotation and just continue filling in the template. We do the same for the expert um, and for the final quotation. And this is now the combination that we use for this one participant. And each participant gets randomly assigned their own celebrities and quotations based on their responses in the screening survey. And now this brings us to the main survey. Um, where we start with the topic opinions. So in practice, we did the main survey one week after the screening survey. So we wanted to make sure that the participants still had the same opinions. And we also asked them for a short written text statement on their opinion that we could analyze later. Second, we wanted to gauge the empathy towards the spokesperson. So here we use an empathy for pain test in which we show an image of the celebrity and a hand in a painful situation. And we ask participants to state what they think the level of pain is the celebrity is experiencing in this situation. And the idea is that higher levels of pain correspond to higher empathy that is shown. And obviously, for each participant, we only do this for the four celebrities that were assigned to them in the trial conditions. And then we use this exact information in the treatment phase. So we show the participant an image of the selected spokesperson, the quotation, and we ask them to just engage with this quotation. So we don't care about what they actually write here. We just want them to spend some time thinking about this and about what this uh, is the opinion of the celebrity. And then after the treatment phase, we just get the opinions on the topics and the empathy for pain again. So we can uh, do a comparison before and after the treatment. And we ran this survey for crowd workers on Amazon Mechanical Turk, who were US residents, just for cultural affinity with the celebrities that we had in the set. And we determined the sample size uh, beforehand by power analysis. All right, and then let's move on to our results. So the first thing we consider is, is there any potential for opinion change on topics? So on the x-axis, you have the for conditions that we were testing for. Um, on the y-axis, you have the potential or the, the change in opinion before versus after the trial. So zero would mean no change. A positive value would mean that the respondents changed their opinion towards the polarity of the shown quotation in the treatment. And the negative value would mean they changed their opinion away from it. And the first thing we can test is, is there any effect uh, if the spokesperson is liked or disliked, if they disagree with the participant? And here the answer is that they don't. So likability has no effect on opinion change. So the first part of the hypothesis already does not work the way we intended it to do. For the expert, we actually find the opposite. So here we see a clear effect of backfiring that the respondent retreats further into their previously held opinion if they are confronted by a disagreeing expert. And then finally, we do see a strong change towards the quotation in the case where a disliked spokesperson agrees with the respondent. But since this is agreement, that means that they actually already held this opinion and they are moving further towards it. So we see a fortification effect if a disliked spokesperson agrees with the participant. And overall, there was no movement away from the previously held opinion in any of the cases. So there is no opinion change. Second, we can consider the empathy towards the spokesperson. So here, the x-axis is the same, the conditions, uh, the different spokesperson conditions. And the y-axis is the change in empathy towards the spokesperson uh, after the trial in comparison to before the trial. So positive value means that the empathy increased. And here we find that for all the conditions where the spokesperson disagreed with the respondent, the empathy levels dropped. 
So disagreement causes a drop in empathy across the board. The inverse does not hold. So agreement by a disliked spokesperson did not increase empathy, it just stayed neutral. Finally, we can consider the language change in the short text blurb that we had participants write before and after the uh, treatment phase. So here we're looking at um, effective language, so emotional language uh, that they are using. And again, the y-axis the y -axis is an increase or a positive value is an increase in the use of positive effective words. And here for any of the disagreeing conditions, we did not observe any change in the use of positive language, but we found that if a disliked spokesperson agreed with the participant, there was actually an increase in positive effective language. So the participant was probably in a better mood and more positive towards this. We can do the same thing for negative effective language, where um, we found that if a liked spokesperson disagreed, this caused an increase in negative language. And we looked into this, this was mostly anger. So there is a clear violation of expectations that if someone who is liked disagreed with the respondents, they became more angry as a result. However, in all of the remaining conditions, there was no change in the use of negative uh, effective language. All right, so what does this mean in summary? Um, our findings are fairly negative. So we set out to come up with an approach to depolarize, and we completely failed in this. So we were not able in any of the trial conditions to change participants' opinion away from a polar end of the spectrum and towards a more mellow viewpoint. Even worse, engagement with the expert opinion backfired and strengthened polarization, so participants further retreat into their own opinion. And the same was true um, if a disliked spokesperson agreed, participants had this sort of justification effect where they said, all right, then how wrong can I be in my opinion? I'm just gonna stick with it. What was also quite shocking was the backlash at spokespersons. So across the board, disagreement led to a drop in empathy levels. And this is kind of the, the title of the talk, right? So disagreeing with people on the web will not make you friends. And if you already have friends, then maybe they're gonna think differently about you. So be careful. We also found that the language change after disagreement by a like spokesperson indicates some sort of punitive effect. So if you disagree, agree with someone, they're probably going to like you less for it. However, there is some light at the end of the tunnel. So clearly there are some caveats to our experiments and our uh, setup is only dyadic. So we only had the spokesperson and the respondent, but real social interactions are more complex. So we could consider triadic relations or even group dynamics. And there we could use the effect that positive language chain after disagreement by a disliked spokesperson was up. So people had a more positive attitude. So maybe then they are more open to change when we would have to look into using this in future studies. There is also some hope for experts. So here, the expert had a very negative effect, but we only use the single fictitious experts and real and diverse experts should be considered because maybe they are more helpful and also in a different situation. So we have a different paper where we look at the role of experts in communicating health messages in a crisis situation. And then we found that really in a crisis situation, experts have more sway because people are looking more for security and stability. So maybe experts in a different situation have a better role. And maybe you're also interested in looking into this. So we would encourage you to look at our code, data, and supplemental material, or get in touch if you're interested. Thanks for your attention.